Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago, and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland, a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe. Most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen Island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there are certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. We have, in the past, covered the astonishing mega metropolis that has been unearthed using ground penetrating radar beneath a nearly impenetrable rainforest that now engulfs the area. A super civilization that not only supports our posit of there once being a number of lost civilizations that have flourished and often seemingly met an untimely demise here on our planet, but has been estimated to have been home to more than 10 million sites such as Tikal, once believed to be independent separate clusters of past impressive and as yet unexplained block buildings, through the use of ground-penetrating radar, have been proven beyond doubt to have once been part of the same super-settlement that spanned nearly the entire rainforest that the site is now home to. Yet we have also covered the incredible ancient stone and earthworks that can be found dotting many areas of the Amazonian rainforest that again are indicative of a past super-civilization. Yet conveniently, since the discovery of Guatemala's super city, funding for such penetrative studies elsewhere of said areas has dried up. The question is why? Why are we witnessing an active attempt to conceal these ruins from the world? We feel the evidence to suggest so is now beginning to mount. However, where mainstream academia won't step, many others are fortunately willing to pick up the slack. And this particular area of interest is of no exception. And as usual, the investigative researchers have turned up some astonishing characteristics of the Amazonian rainforest, features which are indicative of another super-settlement, 
possibly of a similar size to that of the ancient sites found within Guatemala. A group of scientists and researchers, after investigating the area, have put forward what has been pinned as the Amazonian Stonehenge. According to said researchers, they found evidence that a, quote, highly advanced ancient civilization once existed in Brazil. And although they have dated the ruins as having been built 500 years before the European colonization of the Americas began, we feel that the evidence to suggest that they were in reality far before this date will soon be realized, and that these people who once inhabited the Brazilian Amazon were possibly creating an impressive arrangement of immense towering granite blocks. As such, scientists today speculate that these massive stones were like so many other sites we have covered in the past, attributed as that of an ancient astronomical observatory. The structure consists of 27 blocks of granite, each up to 4 meters tall, standing upright in a circle measuring over 30 meters in diameter. In other words, possibly more than a thousand years ago, an ancient civilization of native peoples were flourishing in the area. According to the New York Times, radiocarbon tests and site measurements during the winter solstice shed light on the ancient civilization's abilities that inhabited the Amazon. From this, new archaeologists have realized that the people who lived in the area developed a more advanced civilization than previously thought. Who built the Amazon Stonehenge? When did they build it? Is there a lost super-settlement hidden beneath the Amazonian rainforest as that of the Guatemala rainforest? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. The slow destruction of the Amazonian rainforest, the felling of thousands of square miles of trees, has not only shown us the result of man's insatiable and sometimes irresponsible hunger for resources, but also, ironically, what may become one of the most important historical discoveries of the modern age. Evidence of a very ancient and as yet unknown civilization has become apparent upon the now barren landscape a civilization which would have dwarfed the Egyptian and Roman empires combined. As a result of the drastic deforestation that has taken place over the last few decades to make way for farming land, huge swaths of land features have become visible from the air. Not only are these now grassy areas showing evidence of numerous, enormous complex ancient cities, but also the remnants of what could be classified as straight Roman roads connecting these massive sites. According to a new report published in the Journal of Antiquity, the archaeologist Marti Parsinen, along with numerous other scientists, have documented more than 210 geometric structures. The city spreads out over an area of more than 250 square kilometers, reaching from northern Bolivia to the state of Amazonia in Brazil. Although the early explorers had heard legends from the Indians regarding a fabulously rich Amazonian civilization, which they named El Dorado, the countless searches for this city of gold have all invariably ended in failure. No evidence of a vast ancient civilization within Amazonia had ever materialized, that is, until now. Most scholars subsequently concluded that El Dorado was no more than a story. Indeed, scientists believed that the merciless conditions in the jungle were simply too inhospitable to support a large population. The most influential archaeologist of the 20th century, Betty Meggers, famously dubbed the region as counterfeit paradise. In the early 1900s, the British explorer Percy Harrison Fawcett, while exploring and mapping much of the same area where the ruins were recently discovered, reported finding large earth mounds filled with ancient and brittle pottery. And buried under the jungle floor, he claimed he had also found traces of causeways and roadways. Based on this and other evidence, he insisted that the Amazon once contained large populations and at least one, if not more, advanced civilizations. Despite being dismissed and ridiculed as a crank, he set off in 1925 to find the place, which he christened the City of Z. Shortly thereafter, his entire party, including his 21-year-old son Jack, vanished within the jungle and they were never seen of again. Because of the symmetrical shape of many of these mounds now seen from the air and the way they slant to the north, a possibility that they may have had an astronomical purpose had begun to be seriously looked at. 
we could quite possibly be on the verge of discovering another highly advanced civilization which once lived here on Earth. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The slow destruction of the Amazonian rainforest, the felling of thousands of square miles of trees, has not only shown us the result of man's insatiable and sometimes irresponsible hunger for resources, but also, ironically, what may become one of the most important historical discoveries of the modern age. Evidence of a very ancient and as yet unknown civilization has become apparent upon the now barren landscape a civilization which would have dwarfed the Egyptian and Roman empires combined. As a result of the drastic deforestation that has taken place over the last few decades to make way for farming land, huge swaths of land features have become visible from the air. Not only are these now grassy areas showing evidence of numerous, enormous complex ancient cities, but also the remnants of what could be classified as straight Roman roads connecting these massive sites. According to a new report published in the Journal of Antiquity, the archaeologist Marti Parsinen, along with numerous other scientists, have documented more than 210 geometric structures. The city spreads out over an area of more than 250 square kilometers, reaching from northern Bolivia to the state of Amazonia in Brazil. Although the early explorers had heard legends from the Indians regarding a fabulously rich Amazonian civilization, which they named El Dorado, 
the countless searches for the city of gold have all invariably ended in failure. No evidence of a vast ancient civilization within Amazonia had ever materialized, that is until now. Most scholars subsequently concluded that El Dorado was no more than a story. Indeed, scientists believed that the merciless conditions in the jungle were simply too inhospitable to support a large population. The most influential archaeologist of the 20th century, Betty Meggers, famously dubbed the region as counterfeit paradise. In the early 1900s, the British explorer Percy Harrison Fawcett, while exploring and mapping much of the same area where the ruins were recently discovered, reported finding large earth mounds filled with ancient and brittle pottery. And buried under the jungle floor, he claimed he had also found traces of causeways and roadways. Based on this and other evidence, he insisted that the Amazon once contained large populations and at least one, if not more, advanced civilizations. Despite being dismissed and ridiculed as a crank, he set off in 1925 to find the place, which he christened the City of Z. Shortly thereafter, his entire party, including his 21-year-old son Jack, vanished within the jungle and they were never seen of again. Because of the symmetrical shape of many of these mounds now seen from the air and the way they slant to the north, a possibility that they may have had an astronomical purpose had begun to be seriously looked at we could quite possibly be on the verge of discovering another highly advanced civilization which once lived here on Earth. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michele spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material, said Thilo Rarin a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, When the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya a particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be?